Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Michelle and I will be your instructor for this afternoon. If you can hear me, go ahead and raise your hand so I know that you can hear me. And uh, we're going to wait a few more minutes to see if anybody else is going to be able to join us.
Can you hear me now? Raise your hand if you guys can hear me now. Okay, perfect. Let's start over. <laughs> so I'm going to save and close this. So I'm using the practice returns from TaxWise, and I just opened up Google, Google Chrome rather than going to the actual CCH website to find it. And I just typed in TaxWise practice returns. It's the first one that usually comes up, which is the education library. If you select it and you scroll all the way to the bottom, you have practice returns for the individual and for the business returns itself. I'm going to use the intermediate one and I'm going to use the second scenario because I already have the first scenario in the online version already. What you'll do is you'll select if a new return. If they were a previous customer from the past tax season, it will prompt you to carry over the information from the previous year. So I enter the information and I can either go through the tax forms or go through the interview mode. If you have people who are in the office that are not as experienced as you are, then the interview mode is perfect for them to be able to go through. And they're basically filling out all of the information as they go like the taxpayer's name, spouse name, the social of the taxpayers, I mean the spouse, so forth like that. I'm going to switch it back over to the forms mode because that's what I'm used to. But if you prefer the interview mode, that's perfectly fine. So I'm going to come in here and I'm already going to have my cap lock keys because I like to have caps on everything. And I'm going to just hit tab for each of the things that I need to enter into the return itself. So Glenn does have a wife. Her name is Barbara. And I'm going to enter her information. And if you guys want to know what it looks like as far as the practice returns, this is what I'm working off of. They give you descriptions of you're going to be filing a W-2, a Schedule C, business use of home. It even gives you the information on the right high end side of the total area of the home and so forth. So it's really good to be able to come in here and practice the returns, especially if you've got your preparers coming in. You may want them to come in a few days uh, ahead of time and give them these practice returns to work with so that they can get familiar with the system. So let's get back over here and their address is 223 Cedar Creek. And as soon as I put in the zip code and I tab away, it'll put in the city and the state. So I'm going to come down here and I'm going to put in their date of births. And just hit tab and go to the next one. And as you can tell, it automatically puts in the date, I mean, the age that the taxpayer is. And then I'm going to put in their occupation. Well, as long as I don't. Well, let's go back to it. <laughs> Okay, so we're going to put in her occupation, which is a business owner. And then we're going to scroll down here and we're going to fill out the rest. No, I'm not excluding Puerto Rico income. I've already have it selected as married filing joint because of the interview mode. I'm going to come down here. And they do not have any children. If you need a state, just put in GA because that's where their zip code is, and it'll bring in the Georgia forms on the left-hand side. I'm going to mark this customer as an EPS customer because they're going to want, if they do have a refund, to come back as an EPS. Otherwise, I can mark it as just e-file. So we're going to mark it as bank product. 
we're going to come over here. I'm going to put in my information as far as the pin goes, and I'm going to hit tab. Uh, what forms are you e-filing using pins? The tax return. If they're in the system, this will already be filled out as far as, because I'm in 2017, the 2016 AGI or the pin from last season. And then I'm going to say I authorize, authorize. And most of this stuff. So Robert asked, I mean, Ron asked if uh, Control E still goes to the next required fill. So I'm going to come on this required fill. I'm going to hit Control E and it doesn't. Well, it does go to the next one. I'm used to hitting tab and I'm used to using my mouse to go to where I want to. But yes, you can hit your control button with E to go to the next required field. Most of this stuff, if you have already filled out your templates and you've already assigned them to the each preparer in the office, will already be filled out. I do not have a template assigned to myself, but I will show you how to assign it once we get through with this. So things like this where it says ERO firm and uh, pins for yourself and so forth will already be in the system so that you save a little bit of time that way. But you're basically going in here and filling all the information out. You'll see that my prepare ID is number one. When I set up the templates, I made sure to put my prepare ID as one. Some people put it as initials. Some people put it as last names. I find it easier just to be able to hit one and hit tab and it populate my information rather than to put my full name in there. So. The question was asked, if you guys are a desktop user and you want to go to the online version, then give the office a call and we can get you situated with the online version and get all of your returns situated. Once I'm done showing how to enter the data as far as the online version goes, I will go back to the desktop and show you how to enter the data from there. So I'm going to continue to go into all of the forms that are on my forms tree that are highlighted in red because it contains something that needs to be done. So I'm going to say minimum essential coverage. Did the taxpayer spouse receive insurance through the marketplace? I'm going to say no. Was the taxpayer spouse or any dependent granted a marketplace exemption since they didn't have marketplace? I'm going to say no for that one. So I'm going to select Barbara as having full coverage and you'll notice that the ACA page one now has a green check mark. That's what we're looking for. So I'm going to come back down here to the 1040 page one. In your default, you probably already have the AW2 brought up so you don't have to worry about it. There are quite a few ways of being able to bring up a W2 if a customer has it. When you go to line seven, and you select the right arrow and you can select the little paper that has a chain on it it will bring up link to a form if you go to the new tab then you can select the w2 you can also come over here to the plus sign and just type in w2 and add it from there if you're on line seven you can just easily hit your keyboard key which is control well not control just f8 no, F9, F9, and bring it in from there. Three different ways of being able to go to a form that needs to be linked back over to line seven or any other line. I'm also going to come over here to line 12 and pull in my Schedule C because I know that Barbara has a business that's in her home. I'm going to end up choosing for the spouse because it's her and it will switch it over to Barbara's name. Principal business or profession including product or service. If I hit my F1 key, it's going to bring me over to the F1 help. Last one on the left hand side will say IRS codes. And you'll be able to select the code for like a Schedule C or any other like W-2s or um, 999-Ts and so forth. If I come over here and I am, she is an interior decorator, I can hit the Control F button and I'm going to say design. 
and I'm going to start looking and I can easily hit the down arrow to go to the next one so that I know which one I want to put in here as far as the code for the Schedule C goes. So I'm going to enter all of the information to make sure that I get the red out and that's what we're looking for. And if it happens to be a different zip code than what's on the actual 1040, it's going to bring in that city and state. So I'm going to go over here to the W-2 and I am going to fill out for the taxpayer. Check here if the address is shown on the W-2. Yes. I'm going to put in the employee ID. And then I'm going to put the employer's name. And he worked for the city of Rome. And the address is 101 Government Plaza. And now I'm going to put in box one, 259680. So if I put that in and I hit tab, it automatically rounds it up if it's more than 50 cents. So in instances where you may receive a W-2 where the Social Security wage, Medicare wage, Social Security tax withheld on the Medicare tax withheld might be something different than what is calculated. There is a box right here that says check to take the calculations off of line three, four, five, and six. Once I check that, it makes it to where I can enter the data rather than having to overwrite it. I'm going to come over here and enter the information as far as the state goes. And you'll notice that I have my state over here and it still needs to be filled out. And you notice that my 1040 page one is still red. Did you itemize your deductions last year? No and it makes my 1040 green. When everything has been filled out, and let's go over to the bank use forms because uh, EPS is new this year to you guys, so I'm gonna show you. So consent to use information for bank product determination. It's gonna pull most of the information as far as the taxpayer, if there's a spouse and the address. Right here, you're gonna have to come in here and create them a, a five digit key and make sure to put in the date as well. And now that's green. So we're going to come over to the bank disclosure. And fill all of this out as well. If you want to double click it and copy the date and go to the next, you can paste it. If you want to do the, the, the control and things like that. So now the bank use and the bank disclosure form has been filled out already. So now it's green. 8879 will already be filled out with your templates and it should also be green as well. The resident, non-resident states. All you got to do is come over here and check here if if verified the amounts on this form. OK, since I have not applied for my bank product for the 2017, it doesn't show it. 
But when I do an updated webinar to show you how it's going to work with the new forms and schedules, I'll make sure to show you how it's going to work with the EPS forms in the system as well. So that way you guys get familiar with it. When everything has been said and done and you want to error check the return, then come over here to your diagnostics and you'll notice I have a bunch of red right here. If I select, it will take me to, okay, well, this should be a 1040 EZ. For the 2018 season, you're not going to have the selection for 1040A or EZ. It's just going to basically be the 1040 itself. Once I've made corrections, I have the capability of running the diagnostics again so that it takes away that error that I just did. And I'll just come in here and fix everything up. Once it's been fixed up, you're going to see a button right here that says e-file. Once you click it, it'll say e-file created. This is not the last step that you've got to do. Once it's been created, there might be uh, some people who prefer to wait uh, until the end of the day to e-file it. That way they can e-file all the returns at once. And there are some other preparers that e-file it as you go. So I'm going to hit save and close. And I'm going to come over here to e-filing. And I'm going to come over here to submit e-files. So when I submit the e-files, there are going to be a list of e-files that I can select to continue to e-file the returns. This is the last step that you're going to have to do to e-file them, but it is a very important step that you do come in here to e-file the returns. Now, if you guys are also doing business returns, then you will need to have the desktop version installed. I recommend even if you're not doing the business returns to go ahead and install the desktop because if your internet goes down, you're not going to be able to connect to TaxWise online. But if you have the desktop version installed, then you can still prepare returns in the desktop version until the internet comes back on. And when it does, what you'll do is you'll go to communications and go to transfer to TaxWise online. So all the files get put into online and then you can go in there to e-file the returns. As far as a business return goes, Yes, if you are doing a carry forward from 2017 to 2018, the same principle applies to the desktop. You come over here and you go to tools and you go to carry forward and you go to prior your data. But the neat thing about installing the desktop version is when you install it, it will ask you when you're first initially putting in your EFIN and your registration code, it will give you the option to be able to do the carry forward from there. If you don't, then come over here to the tool menu and go to carry forward and go to prior your data. When you start a new return and you plug in the social, if there is a social or EIN, if you start a new return, you plug it in, it'll automatically say you've got carry forward information. Would you like to load it? Since I have mine listed to where I don't like the pop-ups when I first come in, when you first come in, it's going to ask, which package that you want to go with. So I'm going to choose a 1065. And then it's going to bring up your return list where it shows all the returns and gives you the capability of opening an existing return. So it's going to look like that. And you can create a new return from there. So I'm going to put in the EIN. And of course, it's going to tell me it doesn't match. And I do have the option to either use EIN to name the file if you wanted to do it that way. Otherwise, it puts it as a bunch of letters and numbers. I do have the option to select prompt if return not carried forward. So I'm going to hit OK. It's going to bring me into the 1065 itself. So now I'm just entering information as far as the 1065 goes. And it's the same method if you want to hit control E or hit tab and things like that.
Once I enter, enter the zip code, it'll also bring in the city and state. Is the state required or did the partnership pay federal or state income tax? If I say yes, it'll bring up the state estimated to where I can choose the states that go with the business return. So I'm going to choose Georgia. And it's going to tell me I'm not currently authorized because I haven't downloaded my state return. But if I have it up to date and my state's already selected, then it would bring in the state of Georgia. So now I'm going to come back over here and I'm going to start entering information to get the red out. And I'm just going to enter information. And do you want to electronically file this return? Yes. And what did I leave red? What form are you using to e-filing uh, e using this? And I'm going to say income tax. And then I'm going to go to the page two. Just like online, you're basically getting the red out. In order to do the diagnostics in the desktop, then go over here to go to diagnostics. That way you can select each of these hyperlinks to be able to correct the issues. Now, as far as the way that you go to link forms in the desktop version, I can come over here and hit the little link icon that's right here, and I can link it to another form. I can also hit the F9, it brings it up. And of course, I can always go to the top where it says add form display form and type in what I'm looking for as far as what I need to be uh, having brought in. And you do have the option because it is already selected for shortcut. You can switch it over to the description and start typing in the description of the form so that way you can look up the form and bring it into the return itself. Once everything has been said and done and you've run the diagnostics, then this e-file button will not be gray. You just hit e-file. It will save it to disk. And when you close the return itself, you can close it from up here. And you go to communications, go to send federal state returns. It's going to give you a list of returns that you can select to send. Once you select it and you send it, there's going to be another window that pops up that's going to basically be communicating with the EFC to let you know that it's submitting those um, returns. Now, with either the desktop version or the online version, when you submit the 1040 version, then you will have to wait for it to be accepted before the state version goes. Another question, can you complete a return in the interview mode without doing it in the forms mode? Yes, as long as it's not a very complicated return where you're going to have to have a bunch of schedules, depreciations, and all that kind of good stuff, then yes, you can just keep yourself in the interview mode. People find it easier to be able to go through the interview mode. Yes, you can. It, another question is, can you have both the desktop and the online version? Online version is for 1040. So if you do business returns, then you will have to have the desktop version for the business returns. So yes, you can have them both. You don't have to solely use the desktop version for both the 1040 and the business returns. You can have the online version and the desktop. And if you guys want to choose to use the online version, if you're a desktop user, like I said, just call the office and we'll be more than happy to get you set up. Do you guys have any more questions or would like to see uh, other things in the forms?
One more thing with the online version. The great functionality of the online version is we want to help you achieve a paperless office so that you're not having to print things out. Everything in the online version prints to a PDF format, so you can technically email it to your clients. But if you have a camera or a scanner, then you can utilize the vault feature, which will save the documents within the return. If you are in the forms mode, then the little button for the vault is right here. If you're in the interview mode, then the vault button's right here. Once you bring it up, then you, if you have a camera connected to the USB port, then you can take a picture of all of the documents. If you have a multi-feed scanner, which would probably make it easier, then you can just hit import to vault, select the files. Once they've been selected, then you'll be able to see them at the bottom of the forms tree. So that way you're not having to lug everything around, especially if you have an office, you go home for the evening, but you still want to finish something up on a return, then all of the documents that you need will be under the document. So that way you can finish it without, like I said, having to carry that manila folder with a bunch of uh, documents in it. Another question, are the updates automatic or will we have manually update? So with TaxWise Online, you don't have to update the system. With TaxWise Desktop, you do have to update it manually. And by doing that, you will actually have to go to the support site. And underneath the preparer solutions, you'll see product updates. And if you're already logged in, it will take you here. If not, it'll ask you to log in. The comprehensive update is on the left-hand side, while the form update is on the right-hand side. With the desktop version, in order to choose your states, you're going to have to come over here to the state updates. And if there are states that have not been selected, go to add a state. And then add states to my package, either individual or business returns. And then you select it and it will prompt you, are you sure you want to add California to your package? Once you hit OK, you'll see the states already selected on the left hand side. So if you go back to download and you go back to state updates, you'll be able to see the downloads. So you're going to select the little box that has an arrow pointing down so that way it pulls the update down. With any of the updates, especially the comprehensive update that you download, the program will need to be closed before you run it. So you can go ahead and download your states and see it right here. You can download the comprehensive update. You can also download the state update as well. Once they're finished downloading, make sure that the desktop version is closed and then just select it, run it, when you open it back up, it's going to prompt you saying that there there's an update. The next question is, will I be able to import my desktop 2017 returns to 2018 online version since I'm changing to online for 2018? So in the 2017 version of the desktop, what you'll do is go over here to communications and the one up because I don't have it on here because it's the business return. So let me switch it over to the 1040 package. And if I go to communications, the first option is transfer to TaxWise Online. So once you transfer the 2017 into the online version and you carry it over into the 2018, it will prompt you saying that there is carry forward information. The next question is, can you load documents from scanner to vault? Yes. So when I'm in the online version and I select my vault, as long as I know where the scanned documents are at, when I hit import to vault, then I can go into, like, if it's in my documents, I can go into the documents, select the file, hit open, and it will bring all the documents in here. 
Next question is, is there a suggested e-signature device or program? As far as the e-signature goes, I think it's the Topaz that they suggest, but let me make sure. That is what they want. Because I know there is a digital document management system that d that can send the signature to the customer and they can sign it on their computer. As far as in office, they do suggest like getting a Topaz. And I think they've actually gone just the e sign. So, another question is Can you go over selecting tax return copies to print? I, uh, uh, okay, so in the online version, when you go to print return, it will tell you that you'll get another message with the PDF. So what you'll want to do is if you have it selected, we're going to come over here to the administrator features and we're going to go to settings. And we're going to go over here to general settings and to print sets. I've got mine listed as completed forms because I may have a template in there that has a bunch of forms and I may not always use every single one of them. So I just want the completed forms to be printed out. You do have the option to come over here and say, create my, uh, edit my print set. And you can put and select any of the forms on the left-hand side and put them on the right hand side to establish your print set of what forms you actually want to print out. Once you're done with it, just hit done. And then you can go to choose like the state print sets as well. So when you go to print the return and it's created that PDF format, it only prints what you want it to print. So if you're going to do the ERO defined, make sure that you select ERO defined custom print set. So that way it prints what exactly you want to print. So next question is for documents stored in the vault, how long are they stored? For as long as you have the software, we don't delete any of the forms that are uploaded into the return itself. So another question is, I'm currently able to move my 2017 desktop returns to TaxWise Online. Is there anything else I need to install? As far as the online version, no. There's nothing else that you need to install because it's great to have the online version. You don't have to worry about updating. You don't have to worry about installation. You don't have to worry about backing it up. We do all that for you. Only other thing that you may want to do is when you first initially come in here, bookmark the website so that you can easily access it. Also go to your three little dots and select more tools and select create shortcut. So that way it does create the shortcut for the online version. And all you've got to do is double click it and it will take you directly to log into the software. So you don't have to worry about finding it anywhere. So you select uh, another thing was you, when you upload from the desktop to the online version and you're pulling in those returns, the next step to do is to come over here to the tax return menu go to view more actions and go to import returns You'll see your list of returns that are here to be able to import. And then once that's done, if 
you need help with it, please call uh, our support line so we can remote in and help you with it. So the question was, do I wait to transfer from desktop to 2018 online or I can do it now to 2017 online? Want to know if I can see e-file if I change now to online? Great question. If you're finished with the season and you do not have any other returns to e-file, then yes, we can get you switched over to the online version. If you are still e-filing, because I think it's uh, up until next Wednesday before they take the EFC down and all that kind of good stuff for you to not be able to e-file, then wait until then, switch to the online version because you don't want to have two separate databases that have acknowledgments in one where it needs to have it in the other. And Ron said, it's not Wednesday, it is Saturday, November 17th, e-file final date. So if you're ready to switch and you're still e-filing, wait until Monday, call us on Monday and we'll get you switched over to the online version. So another question is, will I still be able to e-file 2017 in January online version after I switch? Yes. Once they bring the system back online, you will be able to e-file 2018, 2017, and 2016 returns. Another question for online, does the act come in automatically? Yes, it does. You don't have to communicate with the EFC to get your acknowledgements. It will automatically come in. And you can come over here to where it says accepted returns, and it will show you your listing. There is also a report that you can run to be able to see the returns as well. Another question, will we be able to include the state refunds on the bank apps to collect the fees? Yes, you will be able to um, attach a state to the bank application as well.
Another question is, I missed the webinar last night. Was it recorded? Yes, it was recorded. I will get that recording over to Omar and get it uploaded to our YouTube channel. I am going to be doing um, webinars on a weekly basis. I think uh, Alexis will probably send the ones out for next week. And I do have one on Monday at 4 p.m. to go over uh, TaxWise Online if you guys want to sign up for that. So I'm going to be sticking around for a few more minutes just in case you guys have any questions. Again, um, Alexis will probably end up sending out an email ba uh, blast here shortly or either tomorrow to get signed up for other webinars that I'm going to be having. If you guys want to attend, there are going to be like uh, more webinars as far as like tomorrow there's going to be one that's going to go over the desktop and business returns. Uh, another one for next season, uh, next week will be the overview of TaxWise Online. I'm going to do one on EPS's bank products and, of course, the admin features and functions. So a question was, I still have not received a confirmation email from EPS. I have submitted all forms, but I thought that I would have received some kind of feedback and or confirmation from them. Uh, so yes, if you've submitted all the documentations that they require, call uh, the office to see if there's anything that's outstanding that needs to be done. And of course, we'll let you know. Otherwise, if you've submitted everything, we can also um, get in touch with our EPS rep and see what's going on and what needs to be done about it. The number for support is 904-900-3000.
Okay, that concludes our webinar. I hope each and every one of you have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, Ron.